Welcome to World War II Chronicles, a weekly tribute to America's fighting men and women in commemoration of the Second World War. These programs are narrated by Ed Herlihy and are based on the news broadcasts of the war period from the recorded sound collection of the National Archives in Washington, D.C. With the war restricting use of the automobile, millions of Americans were forced to take public transportation. Virtually every train station was jammed with military personnel. By December of 1943, railroads were carrying two million men per month. In 1944, the railroads logged three times as many passengers as they did in 1941. Even more important to the war effort, however, was the railroad's role as the nation's supply highway. Among important home front developments is a threatened strike on the nation's rail lines. Congressional leaders here won't say a word about the railroad strike, which was set by the five operating brotherhoods for December 30th. If the strike actually comes off, it will be the first general railroad walkout since the bitter Pullman strike of 1894. In order to keep the trains running, Franklin Roosevelt ordered the War Department to take control of the railroads. The most urgent of the problems here is the railroad strike set for next Wednesday. Machinery is already being worked out for the government to take over the railroads if no agreement is reached. On December 28th, Henry Stimson spoke to the nation on the significance of the rail crisis. It is unthinkable that the complex demands of modern war can be met without railroads. The successful outcome of all our strategic plans depends upon this continued service. The President's executive order ensures that this service will remain available to the nation. Already, professional politicians are seizing upon the presidential order affecting the railroads and are trying to make a political issue of it. However, the War Department and various military leaders are springing to the defense of the president and are attempting to point out just what one day's tie-up of rail traffic would do to the war machine. General Arnold, chief of the Air Forces, said a one-day stoppage would cost his command the equivalent of 300 planes. By January 14th, rail unions accepted terms suggested by the president and returned to work. And four days later, the railroads were returned to private ownership. I'm Ed Hurley. Join me next time for World War II Chronicles. World War II Chronicles was produced by the American Veterans Center and Radio America in cooperation with the National Archives. To listen to more episodes, subscribe on iTunes or visit AmericanVeteransCenter.org. We need your help to keep the legacy of our World War II generation alive. Visit AmericanVeteransCenter.org to make a donation to support World War II Chronicles and the ongoing work of the American Veterans Center.